is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 subaru ascent courtesy of faulkner subaru in mechanicsburg pa they just got six trucks yesterday anyways for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below wanted to jump in this one because this is subaru's one and only three row suv and three row suvs of course are killing it right now in the u.s and it's got the very best all-wheel drive system in existence meaning subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 Ascent. First one being the base, starting at $32,295, which is a modest $300 increase over the 2020 model year. Premium, starting at $34,795. Limited, which is the one we have today, starting at $39,595. And lastly, the Touring, starting at $45,445. And of course, all of those trim levels coming standard with all-wheel drive. That's one of the big selling points with Subaru at least because most other three row SUVs for just about every other manufacturer out there come standard with front wheel drive and then you have to add another $2,000 or so to get all wheel drive so definitely one of the nice things about Subaru but having said that power plant on all of those trim levels will be the same powering the ascent is going to be a 2.4 liter horizontally opposed turbocharged four cylinder boxer engine putting out 260 horsepower 5600 rpm 277 pound feet of torque available from the power Power band of 2,000 to 4,800 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 6.9 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 21 city, 27 on the highway for the base and premium is gonna be a little different for the touring and the limited. Coming in at 20 in the city, 26 on the highway. Either way, taking regular unleaded fuel. So that's always nice. But before we do any kind of paddle shifter test, or acceleration test. I would have mentioned there is a drive mode labeled X mode for the ascent. And so the X mode button is located just in front of the shifter. Essentially what that is going to do is adjust things like the throttle response, the shift points. It also increases the all wheel drive system engagement and it uses enhanced control of the VDC system to keep you planted at all times essentially. But that's gonna be the button that you're probably gonna to wanna to hit when you're going off road or when you're perhaps driving in the snow. But anyways, now that we've covered all that, what I'm going to do here for the paddle shifter test is I'm gonna slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. That is going to give me full control over the shifting. Keep in mind, this is a CVT, so it is simulated shifting, so to speak. But having said that, let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's do a quick little acceleration test with the paddle shifters and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, you guys, I believe we found our straightaway and three, two, one, go! They're actually pretty quick. I'll admit, they're actually pretty quick. Again, it's a CVT, so it's not technically real shifting, but they're kind of fun. I like that they're there. And also, another thing you could do with those paddle shifters is you could use them for engine braking. I just downshifted there. It slows the car down. So for example, when you're driving in the snow, or perhaps you don't want to use the brakes themselves for slowing down. You can always just downshift, kick in that engine braking, and you're less likely to slide off the road when you do that, of course. So that, of course, is going to be there for you as well. So therefore, I do like that the paddle shifters are there. But now having done that, let's do a quick a little acceleration test here in the ascent and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right in five four three two one go! yeah that'll do <laughs> the CVTs are funny. Dang, definitely no issues emerging onto the highway. That actually surprised me. I don't know. With three-row SUVs, you don't usually expect all that much because they are quite large, but really, certainly no issues with merging onto the highway. That was quite nice. I didn't mind that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.1 inch ventilated front disc in the back, 13 inch ventilated rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's actually quite impressive. It comes in at 118 feet. And so for comparison's sake, the Honda Pilot comes in at 120. It's got that beat. Toyota Highlander, 116. So right around there and the Hyundai Palisade, 129 feet. So in the end, what I'm trying to get at is 100 18 feet is dang impressive especially for a three row suv so absolutely no issues with a braking feel or anything like that so i figured i mentioned that but touching on suspension and handling up front you will get a mcpherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back double wish 
Witherspoon type rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar. And as far as the ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. Certainly no issues with that. The Ascent has been soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely so far. As far as the steering feel goes, it actually is quite nice. I've driven a lot of three-row SUVs and typically with three-row SUVs, you get this loosey-goosey steering feel. Not that this one's heavy by any means, but it's actually just right. It's what I would probably expect for a three-row SUV so I do like that as well as far as cabin noise goes you guys can probably tell you get a little bit of engine noise but other than that there isn't a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin so that is a big plus as well in my book at least I'm touching on visibility again another strong suit here with the ascent so typically the way it works is the boxier the SUV the better visibility that you have and since that roof line in the back is not tapered down as much you can see perfectly fine out that rear window and in addition to that those third row headrests can be pushed down into the seat if that third row is not in use so you don't have those bulky headrests blocking any visibility as well which is what I did and that's what you guys are looking at right now so for that reason certainly no issues with visibility really one of the better ones if you were comparing three row SUVs I will say that but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Subaru Ascent all right here she is you guys the new 2021 Subaru Ascent finished in black let's go ahead and start up front on this one I first always like to touch on the ground clearance when it comes to Subaru because they always do a really good job at that up front you will find 8.7 inches of ground clearance up there to the sides LED steering responsive headlights which is actually newly standard for 2021 which means when you're going around a bend at night those headlights will swivel based on the steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend and again that comes standard for all trim levels across the board of course they will come with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there and just below it all LED fog lights coming standard with the limited and touring trim levels if you wanted to get those but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one so but now since we are around the side here raised roof rails do come standard across the board rear privacy glass standard along with that taking a look at the side mirrors they are power adjustable black side mirrors for the base premium trim level and up is going to give you body colored side mirrors limited and up is going to give you integrated turn signals in them as well you will actually get a satin chrome finish if you were to go with the touring trim level then and take a look at the door handles it is going to differ slightly to actually get chrome door handles if you go with a touring otherwise you're going to get body colored across the board then take a look at the wheels 18 by 7 inch alloys with the base and premium 20 by 7.5 inch alloys with the limited and touring therefore that of course is what you were looking at right now and you do get chrome window surrounds as well as you guys can see which ties in well with that chrome accenting on the side skirts there too but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the ascent and so shark fin antenna coming standard of course just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper and of course you do have some trim level badging found on the right hand side of that rear tailgate as well also some badging for the symmetrical all-wheel drive system as expected there but just below it all dual exhaust outlets coming standard with chrome tips so do you believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around back of the ascent when it comes to opening that rear lift gate believe it or not it is a power lift gate for every single trim level usually you don't find that that's why i emphasize that a lot of times it'll be a manual lift gate on the lower trims power on the upper trims but that was pretty cool to find that there are a few different ways to go about opening it there is a button on the lift gate itself of course there's also a button on the key fob and there is a button by the driver's left knee as well but once opened up Cargo capacity comes in at 17.8 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 47.5 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, 86.5 cubic feet, which is right on par for the course, essentially. It's basically what all three-row SUVs come with, give or take a few cubic feet there. There is also some in-floor storage for all trim levels as well. There is some LED cargo lighting that was also very nice. And you do have some grocery hooks and tie-down anchors back there as well. Then make your way up to the rear legroom. Third row rear legroom, I should say, comes in at 31.7 inches. So not the most in the world, but it is a 
third row legroom for reference. I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did want to also mention for those third row passengers, there is third row USB charging ports for the limited and touring trim levels only. So if you want your third row passengers to stay connected, go with one of those two trim levels there. As far as rear ventilation goes, I'll mention that now there is rear ventilation found on the roof of the Ascent. So therefore that is going to keep all three rows perfectly comfortable. Then make your way to the second row legroom that comes in at 38.6 inches. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. You will also find heated second row seats for the limited and touring trim levels. That's always impressive. Bench seating is gonna come with the base and premium, meaning three seats in the middle there. Captain's chairs is going to come with the touring trim level and the limited can actually come with either bench seating or captain's chairs. It's gonna be up to you. We do have the bench seating in our limited trim level today, but again, you can get it with captain's chairs if you wanted that. Second row USB charging ports actually come standard across the board, love that. 120 volt power outlet coming with the touring trim level only. You will actually find 19 cup holes holders throughout if you were to go ahead and count them. So that is a good bit of drink holders throughout this one as well. So definitely impressive there too. And again, LED lighting coming standard for the second and third row up top. So that's always nice. But now making your way to the front seat, six way manually adjustable driver's seat with the base trim level, eight way power driver's seat with a premium. You will get power adjustable driver and passenger seats if you were to go with the limited or touring. Premium is also going to add heated front seats. You will get ventilated front seats with the touring. Cloth seating is gonna be base and premium. Leather seating is gonna be limited and touring. And I will say overall, seating is very comfortable. And that is of course important with three row SUVs. A lot of times they're road trip vehicles. So seating is perfectly comfortable for me. So certainly no issues there. To take a look up front, there is a tilt and telescope scoping steering wheel. It is leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up, and it will be heated with the limited and touring trim levels if you wanted that. Then take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons will be located on one side of the key. You do have lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear hatch, and the unlock button is going to be the Subaru logo in case anybody was curious about that. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with the push button start if you go with a limited or touring like we have today. So therefore, I'm simply just going to keep the key in my pocket, walk up to the ascent here, and put my foot on the brake. There is an engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is to your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. But I gotta say what probably caught my eye the most was the Tar Heel blue needles on the gauges. That was pretty cool. I like that color. I don't know. But anyways, digital gauges, you can actually change it to a digital speedometer you can change it to display how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your trip A, trip B, really a good bit. You can scroll through tire pressure, it, list continues, but basically everything you would possibly need up on those gauges there. Touching on interior quality, it actually kind of surprised me. And so power panoramic moonroof coming with the touring, it is gonna be optional on the premium and limited. Of course, we do have that option today. So love that extra lighting for videos like this. Wood green accents is gonna come with the touring trim level you will find home link controls for the limited and touring that is going to be optional on the premium and that can be found just underneath the rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors also within that rear view mirror there is a compass in the upper right hand corner as well that was pretty cool tri-zone climate control is going to come standard on every single trim level meaning both driver passenger and rear passengers can all set their own individual temperatures. That's always nice. And I love the contrast between the dark and light leather in this particular ascent that we have today. So definitely a big fan of that. I also like how just above the passenger side glove box, there is a little bit of storage, a very little bit, but still I like that it's there. And the finish is also above the passenger side glove box with the stitching within the leather. It definitely looks very high end. So I'm a big fan of that as well. Really the only plastics that I found was a little bit around the doors here surrounding the door handles on the inside here and just around the shifter as well but other than that everything's pretty high quality and I gotta say I do like it you also have an overhead sunglass holder with a rear conversation mirror as well so that's going to be kind of the school bus like mirror so you could spy on the passengers in the back that's always nice and there's a lot of light blue ambient lighting to kind of tie in with those gauge needles as well so I do like that especially around the cup holders here in the front I noticed that just 
just in front of the shifter, you do have a little bit of storage there if you wanted it. There is also a couple USB charging ports. There's an auxiliary port. Of course, you have your dual cup holders. Also an electromechanical parking brake. And just behind that, you have a very deep storage area within that center armrest. I will say that. Little removable tray with little slots for coins as well. Also, last thing I wanted to mention for those second row passengers is you will find rear window sun shades that are available in the ascent as well, which is always nice when you have kids in there. So you don't have the sun blinding them when it's super bright and sunny out, not like it is today, of course. But one of the things that really impressed me the most, believe it or not, this is going to be weird, Subaru still make one of the few vehicles with CD players in their cars. So that is going to lead me into the tech. Just beneath the tech screen, there is a CD player. And by the way, when it comes to that screen itself, 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the base, 8 inch color touchscreen display coming with the premium trim level and up. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well factory navigation system is going to come on the touring it's going to be optional on the premium and limited you don't really need it though as long as you have a smartphone you're going to hook that up to the ascent and therefore you're going to have free navigation on that screen anyway so you don't really need it in the end and then of course just above that tech display there's another smaller tech screen where you could check out driving statistics outside temperature time of the day how many miles you have left until you hit empty the list goes on but you got a good bit to check out up there as well but also back on the main screen you could check out your radio settings and by the way when it comes to the sound system which we're going to test out here six speakers with a base premium and limited then if you go with the touring you will get a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 792 watts which is going to be ridiculous so let's go ahead and turn on the radio and let's test out this sound system that we have here today it's okay not a whole lot of bass actually going on and that was a song with a lot of bass in it I know but Bass is okay, but ultimately not a bad sound system. But so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the ascent in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board for all trim levels. And there is a 180 degree front view monitor if you were to go with the touring trim level as well. So as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Subaru Ascent is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, of course. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. There is a tire pressure monitoring system as well, but also standard for all trim levels across the board. You will find high beam assist, also Subaru EyeSight, which is gonna give you a plethora of different safety features, including advanced adaptive cruise control with lane centering and lane keep assist, pre-collision throttle management and lane departure and sway warning as well. And then there is also a second and third row seatbelt reminder now standard for 2021. Another new little update for the 2021 Ascent there. Blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert is going to come with the premium trim level and up then if you wanted to go that route. But ultimately, when it comes to my final thoughts of the new Subaru Ascent, again, this is the very best all-wheel drive system in existence right now. So it's got that going for it. Best safety rating as well you could possibly get from IIHS. Love that it has rear window sunshades. That's always a plus. Love the blue ambient lighting, although wouldn't have minded if you had some color choices there that would have been pretty cool to have led steering responsive headlights are absolutely great and i love that they come standard most other manufacturers won't make them standard so Overall, in the end, an extremely solid pick here with the Subaru Ascent. So, especially if you live in a colder climate like I do here in Pennsylvania. But let me know what you guys think of the Ascent in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what vehicles I got coming next on the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.